Hi friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm really excited to do both some indoor and outdoor gardening with you. It's currently February 22nd. My last expected frost is about April 22nd. So we're about eight weeks before the last frost and that's the time I like to sow bread seed and Shirley poppies. I'm gonna be sowing some purple bread seed poppies here in the hydrangea room today. And then we're also going to force some lilacs. I've been doing that inside for the last three weeks and I can't wait to show you the progress. And then we're going to force some tulips and we also need to start to harden off our ranunculus and just get some other things ready for cool flowers planting. So let's go ahead and sow these bread seed poppies first. It's really sunny today, but it's also freezing cold. I think it's probably about 32 degrees at the moment. So what we're gonna be sowing today is the purple peony poppy. I grew this, I think two or three years ago, and I can put some pictures or video on the screen because when I grew it, it didn't look like this color. It was much more up a mid-range lavender, which is really what I'm going for in this um, garden in terms of secondary flowers because we have those beautiful light purple irises in here. And then friends, do you remember, did I grow this one before? The black peony poppy? I feel like it did and maybe it's just been too long and I can't remember. But if I can find some pictures that are properly labeled, I'll go ahead and pop this on the screen. Now last year over in the raised beds, we grew frosted salmon poppies, which I absolutely loved. And we also grew in conjunction with frosted salmon, rose feather poppies. And I noticed something really interesting about rose feathers poppies. If you're growing bread seed poppies for the flower pods to put into arrangements and you want a nice straight stem, for whatever reason, all of the rose feathers poppies had a straight stem, whereas all of the frosted salmon poppies, and also when I grew purple peony poppy, they have more of a curving stem at the top. So I thought that was kind of interesting to note. And the rose feathers poppies also bloomed, I would say about two weeks sooner than frosted salmon. And we planted those on the exact same day. So now let's go ahead and sow these quickly because I'm freezing. So here's what the seeds look like. I've already basically cleaned out this bed, so there's not too much debris around. There's not a whole bunch of mulch. And so what I wanna do is just go ahead and scatter the seeds kind of around my hydrangeas. And I think it will be really nice just to have these pop up sporadically in different locations. So I'm just sprinkling the seeds over the soil now. So I like to plant these eight to 10 weeks before the last frost. I like to plant them when a light snow or rain is expected in the forecast in the coming days. It's currently Wednesday and it's going to rain Friday, so that'll be great. And I also like to check the forecast before I sow poppies. Since we get a lot of rain here and it often rains very hard or it rains for multiple days, what I like to do is avoid sowing them before a torrential downpour because a lot of times then all my seed will be washed to one side. And you guys probably remember when that happened with my one bed of cool flowers. But at the same time, it's nice to have a small amount of rain or a small amount of snow following your sowing of bread seed and Shirley poppies because then it just allows nature to water these seeds in for you. If that's not expected, I would come in here with my watering can. So now that we got those poppies planted, let's pick some lilac before Josh gets here to work on the library so we can force that inside and also force some tulips. I tried to prune the lilac back to a main branch, but in terms of bringing it inside, I wanna cut it down a bit. So it's more like a small amount of branches versus one huge branch. Hey Grace, you want some? You want some lilac? 
Pinko, you bring that inside. So now that we have our branches, let's take them inside and get them into a nice vase of warm water. And I'll show you the ones that I've been forcing for about three weeks. So behind Grace, we have the lilac that we just cut. <laughs> Over here, we have the lilac that I cut about three weeks ago. And isn't that amazing how it's able to bloom inside? This is my first time ever forcing lilac. Now I am seeing that some of the leaves are starting to turn brown. I'm not sure if that's just because they've been in the house so long, maybe our house is too warm. I'm not sure why that's happening at all. Please let me know if you know why. But you can even see this is a white lilac and I think it really is going to bloom inside. I've only ever read about forcing lilac in the home, but I've never seen a video or before and after pictures. So I'm excited to track this forced lilac and see exactly what happens and if it struggles to be forced at all inside, since it is one of those branches that just takes a really long time. So Grace and I will keep you updated on this forced lilac experiment and experience. Now let's go ahead and grab some tulip bulbs that I've been chilling in our refrigerator. I've been chilling this particular cultivar for I believe 16 weeks. So every tulip cultivar is a little bit different in terms of the amount of chilling that it needs. And Cornell has a really great website where you can see a lot of different tulip cultivars and exactly how long they need to be chilled for. And also I believe Edney has a list of all their bulbs and how long they need chilled. So I'll make sure to put both of those links in the description section below. But these are, I think, purple prints. I'll go ahead and double check. And they've been in here since October 21st. So I have a whole video on forcing tulips and in that video I show the tulips from the time of planting to bloom time. So I'll try to overlay some of that footage here and link the video. I'm using the same pot as I did in that older video and I just fill it up with soil so that when I go ahead and put my chilled tulip bulbs into my pot, I'm able to cover them with about, I would say an inch of soil. And I can place these really close together I like to place them about an inch apart. And I noticed that a few of the bulbs in my bag were looking really bad. This one is all mushy. This one is moldy and mushy. So I'll just go ahead and throw those bulbs out. Now I'll cover them back up with some more potting soil. I'm actually reusing this potting soil from the hyacinths that I sold the other day. You could also just plant these bulbs over water and force them that way. They're not gonna take a lot of nutrients from the soil. A bulb has everything it needs in it to bloom. So now we'll go ahead and water these in. And I like to take one extra step when forcing bulbs. I like to let them root in in our cool, dark basement for about one to two weeks before bringing them up into the light. That is definitely not necessary at all. At this point, I could just leave my pot right here on my grow rack in indirect sun and it would flower in about, I would say a month to a month and a half's time. But I have noticed that if I take the extra step of putting this planter or this pot in the basement that's dark and cool, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit for one to two weeks, it allows me to have stronger stems on my forest bulbs. When I'm forcing a bulb to bloom inside my home, I want it to bloom on a nice, strong, stocky stem. And sometimes you'll see four spring blooming bulbs and the stems and the leaves will be very weak and they might even be falling over, falling over, excuse me, or splaying out. Those bulbs were probably grown too quickly and too warm of an environment and they weren't given the proper time to root into the growing medium. So by giving them one to two weeks in a dark, cool location, prior to bringing them out into the sunlight, that really allows them time to get rooted into the soil so that they can produce nice, stocky, strong stems for you that are able to support the weight of the flower head. So I put my pots in the basement now for two weeks and then bring them up into sunlight after that. So I'll go ahead and do that, but let's take a look at these ranunculus. So I started these ranunculus on February 1st 
I brought them out of the basement and under lights around February 10th. Let's go ahead and take one out of the cell. From the look of the leaves, I have a feeling that they have probably filled the cell at this point, but I'm gonna start to harden. Oh, look, you can even see roots coming out the bottom. So I wanna get these into the ground later this week maybe at the beginning of next week. So I'm just gonna put them right outside for a few hours today, gradually acclimate them to how cold it is out there, the sun and the wind. And then I would say about five days from now, we'll get them into the raised beds. I have a few more trays of ranunculus to bring out, but the way I like to do this hardening off process is about three hours out, the remainder of the day in for day one. Day two, five hours out, then the remainder of the day in. And increase this by two hours every day for about five days. And at that point, they're fully hardened off, ready to go out into the garden. And I will be hooping and row covering my ranunculus anytime temperatures dip below freezing. But for now, I think I'm gonna wrap up today's video. I wanna wish you a wonderful day out there in your gardens and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.